Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Grixis Sevenvoke. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. And yes, this is a seven invoke deck. I'm naming it that because there are seven invoke spells in this. This is actually created, though, by Covert Go Blue. Thank you so much, my man. I really do appreciate you sharing this list. Uh, this is an awesome one. I've really just been enjoying this. Uh, I kind of was looking for something just to ladder grind a little bit. Uh, stumbled upon this and decided, hey, let's do a video on it. It's such a sick deck. I have, I think, one, like, something like 80% of the games that I've played with this, which isn't a, you know, I haven't played a ton of games, but I have played a handful. And so far, this has just been a good catch-all deck for most strategies in the best of one ladder at the very least. So we'll take you through this one very quickly, but obviously sitting at the top end, uh, we do have seven Invoke cards. So we've got four Invoke Despair, three Invoke Calamity, uh, that Calamity giving you that replayability of a lot of cards, which is kind of a sub-theme of the deck, especially with Leer as a one-of as well. Uh, but this does allow you to replay a lot of the spells that you may find you need, like Burn Down the House, maybe an Invoke Despair, maybe a Big Score, even a Ma Maestro's Charm, excuse me. Uh, so it really does give you a lot of flexibility and just kind of let you do whatever you need to do. Obviously, Despair is kind of the big game-winning play. You just kind of want to play as many of these as you can. Uh, alternatively, you can burn down the house for the devils and then slowly kind of chip away at the opponent that way. Uh, one nice thing about this list is we do get galvanic iteration, so it's a way of copying a lot of spells. I found myself copying both Invoke Despair, Invoke Calamity, uh, burn down the house, and just things like Big Score or Maestro's Charm in a pinch. If I really, really need to dig out of a situation, those are really good options. Uh, the early game, or, or the early turns of the deck, excuse me, are really just about card draw and board control. We've got Consider for some draw, Fading Hope, and Flame Bless Bolt, giving that exile ability, which is great. Uh, and then, of course, just Negate to give us a little bit of interaction. We do have the Celestis to help ramp us and fix us, given we do have some pretty hefty mana costs. <laughs> uh, but, truthfully, the deck is pretty straightforward. That's all we're really looking to do is get to that late game and really start to take over. I think the, the play pattern here, or at least what we will see, is especially against a lot of the aggressive decks, we'll probably get down to a pretty low life total and then stabilize very, very late in the game. The hope is that you still have enough time to rebuild and take over, but that's not always going to happen. So uh, we'll do the best we can with that, hopefully have some fun, uh, and hopefully learn a little bit along the way. This deck is really, really sick, so I'm excited to give it a shot. Uh, and again, CGB, thank you so much, my man. I really do appreciate you. It's always a blast to play your decks. So thank you very much. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, and yeah, this is definitely a keep. It's a little bit awkward. Uh, lots of pain lands here, but what is kind of nice about this is we get to leave up the Consider or the Flame Bless Bolt here. So depending on what we're up against, this might actually be really, really helpful. Uh, I generally find in this scenario, I'm just going to go ahead and ping whatever I can ping and get it off the field. Save ourselves as much as possible. We do really want to keep... Uh, as much off the field as we can until we know we've got something like a burn down the house or something like that. Uh, if we don't have that, it can get a little bit tricky. Uh, so I want to make sure we're going ahead and we will consider... Actually, fine. That might actually be worth it. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a silly, silly pick here, but I, I kind of like it. Uh, we'll throw out the mountain here just to save ourselves a point of damage if we have to cast this Maestro's Charm. Uh, ideally, though, we can just maybe Fading Hope or something. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and Fading Hope here. Um, do I want this? I think we do because we do need to get black sources for the Invoke Despair here. So, like, seems perfectly reasonable. Uh, also, we are doing the uh, the slower plays here because one, we don't have to take damage from it, but two, we kind of just want them to replay and slowly, slowly kind of be able to take over. And so Fading Hope and then using that Maestro Storm, I think is the way to go. Uh, and this will actually be a really easy way for us to take this down. Although, let's just, let's just make sure we're doing the right thing here. I think we let that happen first. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to do this. 
because we have the Invoke Despair to get rid of that Arlen at some point here, so I'm not as concerned about that at the moment. I think what I'd rather do is just be able to negate something hopefully here, and then we'll see what actually happens. We do need another black source. That was a bit of a ambitious, an ambitious play, I would say, but I think it'll be okay. We'll see. Uh, again, a uh, burn down the house would be amazing right now. That's really what we want to dig for, and truthfully, it might have been a better option to Maestro's Charm just to dig, because we are running into the classic mana issue here where we just don't have all four black sources so probably just a bad call on my part but you know it's okay it's totally fine nice well done opponent very aggressive and very well done i think we could have played that one better truthfully i think we messed that one up but you know what it's okay it was still a good game we'll go ahead and move into game two this month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys. Wow, what an interesting hand. Uh, I definitely think we mulligan this. That was not a great one. This is much better. Uh, so the question is, what do we actually keep here? I actually, or excuse me, what do we throw it back? I actually think it's the uh, invoke. Um, just because it's so much more like late game than we have availability for so i feel like that's probably just the best bet um again i'm gonna lead with that sulfurous springs just to give us that flame blessed bolt option uh turn two we'll obviously just blood fell caves most likely and then we'll see what happens okay cool so we're gonna be able to steal something here i'm kind of curious to see what they take uh i have been against quite a number of these like discard decks on the ladder uh, and I'm kind of curious to see if that starts taking over the meta. My thought being, um, we actually don't have the worst matchup against them from the standpoint of, uh, we actually have replayability with things like Invoke Calamity and just Invoke Despair to draw a lot of cards. So we've got kind of some outs that I don't necessarily think all the decks have, uh, which is great. It just gives us some options. So we'll see what the opponent does this turn. We do have that negate just to throw off if we need to. Uh, and I do think big score is going to be very helpful here. So, perfect. Let's go ahead and negate that Lily. Definitely don't want to be dealing with that if we don't have to. Uh, excellent. So, uh, I suppose we can just wait. Uh, big score is instant speed, so we don't necessarily have to rush into that, which is great. Um, and we'll see what the opponent's up to this turn. Maybe nothing. Uh, kind of curious if they just have a counter but they didn't so that's good and again just getting annihilated with lands here uh all right that's fine we do have to run a pretty high land count if i'm not mistaken in this deck i don't recall the exact number but it makes sense um kind of interesting demir here wondering if it's the invokes style deck all right um let's go ahead and throw leer out uh, definitely expect this to not make it, um, but we'll just pass here. Do have flashback on this, which is quite good. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's see if we can pull something relevant here. Invoke is pretty relevant. Um, that's just a good way to, again, refill a lot of what we need to be doing here. So I think that's worth it to pull. It's not necessarily amazing, but it does, again, just replace itself and then theoretically draw an extra card or two if we don't have anything on their side to hit. Uh, we also do have that Galvanic iteration, so... One thing we could consider is to wait big score just to get those extra treasure tokens. Um, I don't think we have that luxury, though. I'm going to go ahead and just fire off one of these here i'd like to hit a land and we did that's phenomenal uh and we do have a consider here so we'll see what we're up to or what they're up to this turn they haven't really done a ton so far uh which is kind of interesting they've removed some things and they've certainly had some good spells but it's not been that amazing so this is actually quite nice because we do have the follow-up invoke to spare here so i'm not all that concerned about this uh let's count up so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so five, six, seven, eight. So actually, yeah, I am gonna keep that because that allows us to double up on the, uh, yeah, that's super good. All right, sick. Let's do this. 
Let's Galvanic Iteration. And let's go ahead and invoke twice. <laughs> Uh, we do have to pay a life to do it, but uh, I think this will definitely be worthwhile for us. So we go ahead and get rid of that giant scary hull breaker horror, uh, or hull breacher, no, breaker. Uh, and we do get a lot of cards here that we're going to need to discard down to, but that's fine. Uh, I think we'll just get rid of a mountain here. So now we've refilled our hand, we've gotten rid of their biggest threat, and theoretically they may not have a ton left here. Um, but we'll see. I mean, they could certainly have a handful of things. Um, I do wish we had a little bit more to go off of here, but I'm actually going to preemptively big score. Uh, just to draw a little further into the deck. And then theoretically that wins it. There we go. That was perfect. That's exactly what we want, guys. That was absolutely amazing. Let's see if we can do it again. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And yeah, I mean, I'll keep this. It's not amazing by any means, but we do have that turn one consider. Uh, and then, of course, Maestro's Charm as as well as that big score and even Leer later on here. So we'll see what the opponent might be up to. They did give us a nice little hello, so we'll do the same. Uh, looks like it could be another mono black style deck. I think it's pretty obvious that we're going to see a lot of mono black. Um, do we keep this? I think not, actually. Um, I'm expecting that we'll be able to find lands, and it looks like that's not going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and Bloodfell Caves here. That's just an easy turn two. Garnish that life back, and we'll see what the opponent's up to. Looks like nothing still. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. We're just going to throw this down. And uh, again, keeping in mind, we need the black sources for the Invoke Despair, which is, I think, the higher value spell between that and Invoke Calamity. Um, do we play the Maestro's Charm? I don't think so, actually. Uh, and so it is one of those where we want to make sure we have that, uh, the number of black sources that we need. But again, we're also in a position, we're not in a rush. Like the opponent's not done anything so far, uh, which is great. So Karn Silux, I don't particularly care about that. Now, one thing to consider is if we big score, they can kill the treasure tokens, uh, which is worth noting, but, oh. Yeah! <laughs> what? Why? Why did that happen? Um, okay, we did it. Let's move to game four, I guess. All right, guys, here we are for game number four. A uh, little surprised by that last game. I'm not 100% sure why they just gave up, but I'll take it. Uh, this seems like an easy keep. We've got three lands. We've got the Maestro's Charm available on turn three, and we have that turn one Fading Hope just to help us out if we need it. Uh, did the opponent mulligan? I feel like they might have. Um, I'm wondering if maybe in that last game they just didn't draw anything. That Karn Silex was not doing any any major work on the board at the moment. So I'm wondering if that was just a desperation move. They just didn't have anything. So, Which is fine. Uh, we're kind of jumping through these games pretty quickly as well. Curious to see what the opponent's up to this time. But uh, at the moment, they just seem to be hanging out. So we'll do the same. Uh, guys, I just want to remind you, uh, yesterday's collection video did go up. We finally got back into that. Week number 21 of the collection series. Been an absolute blast doing that. I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. Uh, just want to remind you, uh, as we're getting to that 50% mark of that binder, so we're almost halfway through. We've got what, 240 cards is halfway, so we're almost there. Uh, I wanna encourage you guys, we, we kind of incorporated a little bit of a change in that series, which is to allow you guys to set parameters for me to pick up cards based on. So as an example, I know that might get a little confusing, we're allowing up to three parameters. So if you leave a comment in the comment section and say, hey, find a creature that was uh, uh, that has a power or toughness four or greater, and it has to be printed in 1999 or something along those lines. If you leave a comment like that in the comment section of those collection series videos, I will do the best I can to find a creature or find a card that meets those parameters and throw it in the binder and make sure we're giving you guys the shout out for helping me figure out what cards to collect. I think that's kind of a fun way to do it. Uh, it gives you guys that opportunity to be a part of the series, which I think is awesome. Uh, and it should make it a little bit more exciting because as of right now, I'm just kind of randomly picking cards that I know I want and that's it. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure we get that opportunity to kind of talk through that together. I think it'll be a lot more fun. Uh, but looks like the opponent uh, is timing out here. So we're just going to have to wait this one out. Sorry about it. Uh, normally I would not 
uh, like on video, this kind of sucks. Like I hate doing this, but it is what it is. Um, I hate when people do this, but I'm leaving it in. Uh, also guys, just a heads up, uh, as this video goes up, I think that will be correct. Yeah, cause tomorrow's the eighth. So then, yeah. Uh, it's my one year anniversary, wedding anniversary with the amazing wife, uh, Caitlin. She is amazing guys. Uh, and I'm so, so stoked. Um, we made it to one year. It doesn't feel like it's been a year. It feels like it has gone by so quickly. And it's just an absolute blast to be able to say, oh, there we go, we won. And I married an awesome, an awesome lady. Uh, let's move into game five. These are going really quick. All right, guys, here we are for game number five. Uh, I think we can try this. I don't love that we don't have blue mana, but I expect we'll find it, so we'll give it a shot. Um, as we jump into game five here, guys, I do want to gush over. Uh, I got to gush over my wife a little bit here. <laughs> uh, it is our one year. We're actually going to be, oh, there's our blue. Uh, we'll actually be out of town uh, when this video goes up. I know I've been out of town like the entire month of September. One last time uh, for our anniversary, we are going up to the mountains and we're really just going to enjoy uh, some us time. It's going to be a blast. I'm really excited. I think uh, I've got, so it's the paper anniversary. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, each each year has like a traditional anniversary thing. We're not the most traditional people in the world, I'll just go ahead and say. However, it does kind of help because at least you've got like a starting point when it comes to a gift idea. Um, so where we're going is Asheville, North Carolina, uh, which is, you know, relatively close to where we are. But um, there is a small place there uh, that I've never been but it's right next to the bakery that we always visit. And I literally mean always visit. Caitlin and I both love that place. It's an absolutely just phenomenal little uh, little dive. Uh, and I really, really like it. And so we're gonna go there. Um, and the place next to it, so it's called Origami Inc. Um, and they do a lot of interesting stuff, but they do handmade and like custom journals and things like that. Caitlin has been looking for a journal for quite some time. Uh, and just not been able to find one that she really likes. And so I thought it would be a really good idea to try and uh, get something really special for her, something really unique. Um, I did contact them and ask them if they could like customize one with like a date and like all this stuff. We'll see if it works. But um, I'm, I don't know. I'm really stoked. I think it's a hopefully something she'll enjoy. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I really hope so. Um, but I'm, I'm excited because I think she will like it at least. Uh, but we'll, we'll see, I guess. Uh, should be interesting. Um, truthfully, I'm just gonna do this uh, and we'll see if this pans out. I kinda wanna wait on the burn down the house or invoke despair play. Um, but yeah, that's fine. Got our lands that we need, so that's helpful. Um, but yeah, so I, we'll see. That's kind of the plan. We're, we're actually leaving um, on Saturday, so yesterday as far as when this video goes up. Uh, and we will be there until Monday, uh, and I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Uh, one year, guys. Can't believe it's been a year already. It's been absolutely phenomenal. All right. Uh, do we feel they have a negate? Probably, but uh, we're going to go for it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can we do this, actually? Hold on. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we totally can. Excellent, let's do it. I'm double invoking here just because, uh, why not? <laughs> Truthfully. Um, okay, that's perfectly fine. So it also does kind of eat the counter here, which is great. Let's go ahead and invoke and see if they have another counter. I'm going this route because if they do have another counter, that's fine. Uh, we're going to take a little damage next turn, but then if they only have like a creature in hand or something, we've got the burn down the house. So I'm not really all that concerned about this gin. Um, as long as they're not drawing just a ton of extra cards, it doesn't really matter. So, And they might. I have no clue. Uh, we played a deck similar to this like two days ago. So, yep, they have a syncopate. Fair enough. Syncopate's actually pretty good because it exiles the... Uh, the invoke, which is kind of annoying. Sure. Uh, impulse is very good. It just gives them that card selection, which is going to be tricky for us to handle from the standpoint of they know they kind of just need to protect this gin 
at this point. We've only got a few cards in hand, so I think that's just going to be their their game plan is to protect as best they can. Maybe not. Maybe they just went for more gins. I don't know. We'll see. Um, hopefully they don't have another counter spell, but I'm guessing they do. All right. Uh, I do think we just kind of have to go for it, though. I don't think we have another option. I'm sure they've got something to play. Uh, I'm curious if it's a counter or not, though. Okay, Fading Hope, sure. So at least we kill one, that's somewhat helpful. And they scribe to the bottom, which is also a good sign. Uh, we really need to get like an Invoke Calamity or even just another Burn or Maestro Storm maybe. But any of the above would be great. We do have a handful of live draws here, so we'll see if any of them work. All right, they did. All right, yeah, I mean, I mean there's not really a better option. We're just going to go for it. Okay, they didn't have anything to play, which is good. I'm assuming that means they had like a land in hand. Sure. All right, we're going to blood fill games. <laughs> Unfortunately, we also don't have a lot to play, um, but we've dealt with a handful of things, so that's good. Let's go ahead and consider. I'm curious if they had a counter, if they would actually counter that, because it seems like one of the cards you could reasonably kind of do something about, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to Galvanic Iteration and then Maestro Storm twice. Unless they counter this, which is fine. Cool. Uh, normally, this isn't necessarily the best idea, but truthfully, we just have to find stuff to play. Uh, and if they have a counter on one of them, they have a counter on one of them. If they have a counter on both, then they're left with nothing in hand. Uh, if they have no counters, we get two cards out of the deal. So that's fine. We still get one. Excellent. Um, what's the best option here? Because they did exile one of the invokes. I'm going to go invoke despair. I'm not 100% sure that's the right call. I'll be honest. Invoke calamity might have been the better call just from the standpoint of it's more flexible. Truthfully, it's also instant speed, but double invoke here is quite good. So, oh, sick. I just didn't have anything. Uh, let's do this. If they didn't counter the invoke, they're not going to be able to counter that. Um, go ahead and play the ridge. Excellent. All right. Uh, so now they can't counter spells. I'm sure they've got fading hopes and stuff like that, which is totally fine. I don't particularly care because we've still got multi invoke. Like I think we'll be fine. Uh, they're going to draw some cards and discard at least one. So we've dealt with three gins at this point. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the nice thing about this deck is like they don't generally have a wide array of creatures on the battlefield at once, which sets up extraordinarily well for the Invoke Despair plays. Uh, it just makes it so much easier. All right, I'm gonna go for Leer first. If they do anything about this, it's fine. I don't really care that much. All right, let's go ahead and invoke to spare them. We'll draw some cards. Uh, do I care? I'm gonna consider, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll throw that in the graveyard. Okay, that's fine. Sure, so they bounce it. That's not the end of the world, but they still are gonna take quite a bit of damage here. And we are in, again, kind of refill mode while they've got three cards in hand. So they can keep answering all they want, the, the Leer, but we've still got plenty to do uh, that should be able to take them out here. So, ooh, and a negate. Yes, please. All right, so let's not, let's not beat around the bush here. Let's just try and kill them. We've got negate back up. So if they go for like a syncopate, uh, great. <laughs> um, if they do have any other kind of counter spell we just negate that too so like this is easy easy pickings i believe uh yeah sure kind of burn ourselves a little with the uh the pain lands but i think this will be just fine um and again there's not a lot they could have if they have double counter spell like double negate sure but like other than that this isn't going to work too well for them uh, and even if they do, they're burning out so quickly here. So like burn down the house can take them out next turn or leer or whatever. 
Okay, yeah, you got it. What a stack. Uh, yep, I will happily keep that. All right, so they have got one card left. Uh, otherwise, they're dead. <laughs> this is their last card, unless it's a draw spell, which they might have a draw spell, but that's not going to do it. We're going to invoke. Invoke into invoke. And we did it. Um, oh, yeah, we can do another thing. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't... This, this doesn't matter. Resolve all. I, I don't care. We'll decline. Uh, technically, there's a better way to do that. But we still won, guys. That was a really fun game, actually. That was really good. This deck has been really good. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys. So, uh, Grixis 7 Vogue. How do we feel about it? First of all, uh, CGB, thank you again, my man. I really do appreciate you. As always, you build probably some of the best decks out there right now. So, CGB is really obviously up there on the, the gameplay list if you haven't watched him. Uh, first of all, I, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Go watch him. Uh, don't watch us. Watch him. Uh, but also, uh, he really is a fun personality, and he does a really good job. So thank you so much, man. Uh, really do appreciate it. And the deck building here is just phenomenal. The, the, the card selection, the card choices that you've made, and the amount of each card that you've made. Uh, I think it shows that restraint by only having three Invoke Calamities, not the full four. Uh, having more on the Invoke Despair end, I think is a good call because you get so much more out of that card generally, but the flexibility of Calamity gives it that edge. And so you've got to balance that quite well. Uh, and not only that, but the mana cost alone is high. So you got to be able to get to that point in the game. And especially on the ladder right now, you do have to fight Werewolves, Mono White, uh, Azorius, Bant, all kinds of relatively aggressive decks that you're gonna have to deal with. And so this does have the tools to get there, in my opinion. It's a great ladder grind deck. Uh, you really kind of force people out of the game pretty easily. Uh, and I love that. I think that's fun. So I know I'm a bad person. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. Like I said, I'll be out on my anniversary weekend. I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Uh, but I'm really excited to have some time with the, with the wife. Uh, I really... Really missed her in the month of September, you know what I mean? So uh, regardless, guys, I will be back hopefully very soon. And thank you all so much again for watching. Do watch the collection update series as well. That was a blast yesterday. I hope you guys comment down below on that one. So that way we can, uh, we can get some cool cards with your involvement and suggestions. But guys, I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.